All right, thanks to PCB Way, we have some PC boards. And these were not cheap. Um, these are really uh, fancy PC boards. They use a particular type of dielectric. Um, these are not FR4, these are uh, what are called Rogers. Uh, Rogers makes a bunch of material that is infused with ceramic. So they're, they're a combination fiberglass ceramic. Uh, if you didn't know any better, you think they were ceramic. They, they feel hard. Um, it's very thin. It's a 032 board. Um, and uh, it has a, a, a f gold flash on both sides. So uh, it looks like uh, that's going to be blown out in the camera there. Let me uh, lower the exposure here a bit. Uh, I guess you can see a little bit better. But anyway, that is what we designed. So uh, the first thing to do is uh, there we go. There you can see it. Um, let's. Um, build some of these up and test them and we'll compare them with the uh, with the actual design file see what happened all right i put some uh, sma connectors on on one of the boards and uh, it's a little difficult to do because these are thin boards these connectors are kind of set up for 060 064 and these are 032s but uh, i made it work so there we go. I've got it on a uh, got it on the uh, spectrum analyzer here. Let me move things around a bit. All right. Well, here is the filter shape. Um, let's do amplitude uh, scale. Let's do five. Make it look a little bit nicer. Amplitude. Let's move this up. Yeah. There uh, and I changed the amplitude here, scale per division. Oh, I'm changing scale per division. I, I wanted to go to five, and then I wanted to do a reference level of that up. That, there we go. Yeah, there is our filter. So um, it is centered at 2.4 gigahertz, and it is about 200 megahertz wide. So I have some markers set here. I have one marker at 2.3 gigahertz and one marker at 2.5 gigahertz, okay? And then our center here is right at, uh, yeah, let's change our marker here. And that's our peak. Our peak is, is off a little bit, but you can see it's kind of wavy there. But our center is at 2.4. So it's 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. So very, very easy to remember. All right, is that what we designed? Is that what we want? Let's take a look at the uh, design graph here. All right, this is what we designed. We designed for a center frequency of uh, two, four, five, and our edges here are at two, three, five, and at two, five, five. So the whole thing has been shifted left just a tiny bit. But other than that, it's it's matching the uh, matching the model perfectly. Remember, we did two models. We did a generic model, not generic, but a fairly standard model of um, the filter using equations and stuff. The fancy program that we've been using, Genesis, allows us to actually take the, the geometry and tessellate it. So it automatically divides up the geometry, tessellates it, and then keep, treats each little triangle as a separate magnetic electrical field thing. And then it does a, a mesh uh, Maxwell's equations to see where those fields go in three dimensions and uh, designs things that way. And that's what they call momentum. Okay, I don't know if that's a if it's, that's a keysight word or that's standard in the industry, but they they call it momentum. But it's a uh, it's a tessellated grid, uh, a lot like what EasyNeck does. EasyNeck for antenna design, it chops up into a bunch of little dipoles and then it simulates it that way. Well, this ch chops it up into a whole bunch of little tessellated uh, patches and does it in in a much more complicated way. All right. So um, this is the expected result. And so the 
the the the whole width and everything matches ours exactly. Like I said, it shifted left a little, um, but if you just did it with normal equations, you would get this graph, okay? Which would say that uh, you would have a much broader filter, all right? And uh, so what we're seeing here is a validation that the model and the physical device are matching for the width of the, uh, of the device and the shape. Okay, so that's matching. What isn't matching is this frequency change. Now, why do we have a frequency change? Well, I'm not quite sure. I could speculate. I could say, well, maybe the actual Rogers material doesn't match the uh, data that's used in this. I did choose what I believed was the correct Rogers material um, and uh, used the particular Rogers material from PCBWay. They could be that there's just a difference between those two. And um, uh, something like this, you'd say, oh, okay, I'll go back and I'll figure out what that change uh, in the difference between the Roger material that was used and the Roger material that was modeled. And I believe that would move it, that would move it back and forth. Um, other than that, I don't really have a good explanation for it. People can comment below if they've done any work like this before and they see a shift like this and they go, oh, that's because of your input launches. You need a longer input launch. Um, uh, I, I, I didn't know enough about how to feed this particular filter. It, it's fairly short launches into the filter and maybe that's not the right thing to do. Maybe they need longer, longer launches. Um, but I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. Um, and uh, it's the first time I've ever gotten to do fancy PC boards. So that's also, that's also pretty cool. I don't know if you can really get a, yeah, it's hard to get a sense on the, on the video of just how these feel. Let me bring my microphone over and just clank these things. I don't know. They're hard. They're like dominoes, right? They're uh, they're not PC board. PC boards would kind of go thud. These these are kind of a hard, hard, uh, hard ceramic. So anyway, kind of fun. It's definitely not alumina. Alumina is just pure uh, ceramic, but this is some type of magic material that Rogers does. Um, I'll I'll uh, I'll go see if I can find the data sheet on this Rogers material. All right, I probably should have started out with this first. Um, probably people are really scratching their head. What is he talking about this Rogers things? What is Roger? Um, anyway, it's Rogers Corporation and they make substrates uh, for high frequency mater for materials, right? And they have a series called RO4000. They have a 4000 series of RO Rogers um, material. What is it? It is a hydrocarbon ceramic laminate, okay? Ceramic laminate, but it's got hydrocarbons in it. So it's a bit funny. It's kind of like uh, epoxy with a bunch of um, uh, ceramic infused into it. So it says that uh, it helps for a bunch of stuff, right? It, 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 it's much better, much more uh, accurate, much more repeatable, and a whole bunch of things like that. So um, it does talk about, I know this is small, it does talk about uh, RO 4003C. That's what I'm using. Laminates are currently offered in various configurations, utilizing both blah, 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 glass fabric styles, all with configurations meeting the same laminate electrical properties, specially designed as a drop-in, blah, 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 blah. Uh, anyway, it talks about it like that. Um, Okay, so let's read a little bit more about this. Uh, uh, low dielectric uh, constants, um, stable properties, low thermal uh, expansion stuff, um, low in-plane expansion co- anyway, a whole bunch of stuff, right? Uh, let's get page two. Um, what is this, a graph of Dielectric constant, constant versus frequency, okay? And uh, 
you can see that normal woven materials, like a normal PTFE or something, does a weird thing. And uh, the Rogers materials are nice and smooth and gentle and it, they're very predictable and stuff. So that's, that's what you like. They have a low insertion loss. Um, yeah, you can read their data sheet, go to their website. All right, uh, let's see here. This is the data sheet for some of the materials. Uh, the RO4003, which I'm using. Here's all the, the things you might be worried about. Dielectric constant, dissipation factor, uh, tangent phi, um, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, yeah, a lot of data here. So um, when you uh, model the device in Genesis, it has built-in databases. And so I told it use Rogers 4003, and it has one that's exactly for a uh, half ounce copper on 32 mil substrate. That's what I used. Uh, here, this dielectric constant, 3.38. You go over here, 3.38. Lost tangent, 0 0.0027. Lost tangent, uh, uh, where'd the lost tangent go? Here, tangent, dissipation, same thing as dissipation. Uh, 227 to 221, I mean 007, <laughs> 0 0027 to 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 go say, okay, this is actually 0021 because I'm operating at a low frequency. And so that might have been part of my error was that right there. Okay, um, anyway, you get the idea. Then when you go to order the board, you go to PCB way and order your board. Okay, and part of the board ordering process, you tell it how many pieces you want, how big it is, how many, blah, 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 blah. Um, how many layers, and then you get to choose, is it an FR4 PC board, which most people would do, or is it alumina substrate, like for LEDs and stuff, you can have an aluminum a substrate, or is it Rogers? Uh, and so you select Rogers, and then under Rogers, they have their two different types, so I selected 4003, and then you get to select the thickness, um, and I, I said it's uh, 0 0.8, 0.8 millimeters, which is 0, 032. Anyway, there you go. So that's what I keep talking about Rogers. It's this uh, material here, and that's what you end up with uh, when you're done. And yeah, they're really, really nice. So uh, yeah. I think that was a good exercise. I'll stop the, the, the video series here. I think that's a good exercise at looking at um, different types of filter designs in what is called microstrip design. So these are microstrip design. There's a transmission line on the top and then a ground plane on the bottom. So that's microstrip. And then there's different configurations. There's end to end and there's some type of overlapping thing. This one's called a hairpin filter because of, it looks like hairpins from the old vintage days and a whole bunch of them stacked up, different orders. And then I talked about um, how you might model these things. And a program like Genesis allows you to model them certain ways, several ways, and then to do an optimization on those things. So I showed the optimization pro optimization procedure. And then um, there is a layout section in that program that I use to actually create the Gerber files. So these Gerber files came directly from Genesis and then were sent to a PCB way. Um, PCB Way did have some questions about the board. First of all, they said, are you sure you don't want any, any um, uh, silk, sc or silk screen or, or solder mask? I said, nope, none of that stuff. And then they go, oh, wait a minute, there's no vias. There's no vias at all on this board. I said, yeah, that's okay. And then they said, um, there was some edge clearances and stuff that I had to worry about. And uh, anyway, so they were looking out for make sure they were doing the right thing, making sure I was doing the right thing. So they have very good communication with the person who orders the board. So I'm, I'm uh, 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 gladful for that, that interaction with them. 
And then uh, you wait in the mail and here they come. Uh, so again, these are expensive. I, uh, these, I'm, I mean, they were free for me, but I think the cost of these 10 boards was around $230 um, if you had to uh, buy them yourself. So like I said, yeah, the, the Rogers material really, really adds up um, the cost to, uh, to PC boards. So that's why everybody uses FR4. <laughs> but yeah, when you move up, move up into high frequency land, you really, really need good substrates, either something like Rogers or Illumina, which is probably even more expensive. So anyway, I think it was a good exercise. Uh, I was able to actually, uh, actually build a real filter and uh, it ends up uh, being slightly off, but still usable um, uh, for the frequency range I was interested in. So yeah, a second revision would be better, but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed that little mini series on, uh, on this and take, take some of the mystery out of this RF magic, uh, this voodoo magic. It, these things are really just little little antennas that transmit um, from one side to the other side and then they act like little capacitors when they're next to each other. There's some coupling back and forth, some mutual inductance and stuff. Anyway, uh, that's what's going on here. <laughs>